Everyone said the world was ending. No one mentioned how boring the end would be. Written by Alinda G. One day it's all, Oh my god, the world is ending! One day it's all, Fight for your country, your god, your family! One day it's all, Fight for your life before you don't have one! It just gets more and more bleak from there. You have to get the picture by now, right? Those of us who were paying attention when the world came to an end saw all kinds of wonky headlines. I woke up as a normal kid one day, and then I was expected to read up on real-world horror and grow up overnight. News articles within days explained the inevitable end using science, religion, politics to describe how and why we would all just cease to exist. They were all wrong. For the most part. I can positively say it was horrible watching the news articles roll in one after the other, verifying that the end was near. Half of the family saying it was fake news, half of the family buying every packet of instant mash and every can of green beans that they could. It was horrible watching the bombs drop, both on TV and on the horizon. Horrible having those final conversations Sending those final messages to people too far away from you to reach in a few hours. Horrible watching both sides of the family, fake news and instant mash alike, draw their last breaths and expire. It was terrifying watching those things crawl forth from the blast zone when the bombs were done. They took the form of friends and family, dead and alive. They took the form of neighborhood dogs and cats which few of us bothered to account for in the beginning, until it mattered. Until the dead-slash-alive neighborhood pets were eating our loved ones in front of our very faces. Even the local friendly squirrels and possums were a danger. You haven't seen a true trash panda until you've witnessed a raccoon eat the nose off your barely-alive 97-year-old grandmother. The creatures crawl forth, and they bite, and they chew, and they slaughter. They left nothing in their wake. This was all, for the most part, predicted. How horrible it would be, not so accurately. But we were absolutely warned of the end. I guess we just weren't warned of the after. All of the exact details of how and why the end finally came about doesn't really matter. What matters, to me at least, is how fucking boring the end actually ended up being. It started out with screaming and panic and running. Total chaos, adrenaline, competition. You don't have time to process your emotions. You only have time to pack up your tablet, several backup chargers, and a kitchen knife or six. Maybe you leave your wailing half-brother behind in the midst of it all. Don't worry, he's a total spaz anyway. Then, there is the adventure part of the end. You're running, crawling, digging, climbing your way through and under and over any and every no trespassing and private property sign you come across. In the hopes that maybe, maybe, you'll come across some crazy weapons cache like in the movies. Or if you were as bored with the whole thing as quickly as I was, an old rich dude's porn cache. You don't need stable internet for homemade video VHS viewing, do you? After all, your parents were dragged into the ash and devoured weeks ago. Their blood splattering the walls, your cheeks, your half-imbecile's hair. What they didn't know couldn't hurt them, right? When you've opened every cabinet and hacked every safe, busted every piggy bank and pried open every trunk, when you've looted and rooted through every conceivable nook and cranny in your area, you start to get, well, bored. I got bored, okay? Everyone bitched about the world ending. No one talked about how fucking boring the end would be. No longer could you post a picture of your breakfast, lunch, or dinner to Instagram. No more hashtag burrito as big as your face pics. Actually, no longer could you edit a picture of your breakfast, lunch, dinner, 
or burrito as big as your face in VSCO before posting it to Instagram. There was no one left alive to ask you where you were eating or how you made your French toast look just so damn yummy. And my meals had always been so good looking before the end. The beautiful orange in the sky that is adding to the natural daylight glow in your nudes doesn't matter. There wasn't a Twitter to post it to. No one left alive to condemn you to hell. Or send you random dick pic. Thank God. Or comment from their shared marital profile how beautiful your pale skin was. You could text all day long, sure. Funny texts, funny memes, funny gifts. Send 32 incredibly relevant Baby Yoda pics to your best friend's number? Absolutely! But would anyone actually respond? No! In the wake of such graphic viscera, such violence, the millions of piles of death across the globe, the few of us left alive were left with... nothing. Huh. Where once I was gifted with the ability to contact anyone in the world using internet and trusty social media, I had no such way. Where once I was blessed with the ability to hear a loved one's voice or read a good friend's sarcasm, I was left with nothing. Day in and day out. Endless lack of communication. Silence in survival. Ugh. Why did I have to survive the blast? <laughs>